Welcome to Warblock. I've made some gains on um, my backlog. So, um, page three is now all complete. Of course, as soon as I add something, that will shove everything down, but I've made a I've just done this one so that will shove that one down so I've got one spare but I still got one two three four five six on this page to do so not brilliant but I'm gonna play this one why not so obviously we want to go from there over to um, um, Andy Grat so this is um, uh, Ad Watto So obviously we're starting from there. We want to go along here. And there's three ways to do this, I guess. For example, we could go this way. Or these ways because this is sort of open less open it should be a bit more hilly but I'm sort of rushing it through so I haven't really figured that out and I think from how I sort of intended it to be set up we should be able to just overpower them in theory um, so I think I'm just going to try and take the road because I think that's sort of the idea but we still got to sort of contend with these outlying units somehow so i'm going to take the road and then just see how it goes really so we've got um adwa yes adwa adwa to adigra not adwato because adwato is adwa too i was looking at the header there so Sort of want to get rid of this unit. But we also want to get there and take these out. So you know him there, this battle group up here, move the rockets into there but fire them on that and use my airstrikes on this. See if we can shift him. I won't advance with the mechanized because I want to leave them stacked up. Limit the risk of counterattacks. There's one in total. It's 0.7, so 1.7 should be on. So he might recover, but he'll be a little bit more beat up. I could possibly move down this way next turn. Uh, 
Right now we're going to get some more reinforcements. So what do they want to do? Mm. He's in a good defensive position, so I'll recover with him. In turn, nice lot of artillery in there. That might have been actually the best thing to have taken in the first instance, really. Move him, yes, that will defend the artillery and also stack that up there. I'll leave all this for the time being, although I do want to move some air defence nearer. No bridges, I forgot to put bridges in. Okay, so we've got some more units there. Forgot to fire the artillery. Let me start again. Put bridges in. Okay, so here's the fresh map. So I'm going to do the same thing. Only, I'm not going to focus on this unit because I think I can probably take him out using other methods. The interesting thing is, because will I win these two battles? Because I won them last time, I think they were both three to ones. And there's no reason why I shouldn't, but it's my old adage, if this goes wrong it could set the whole pace of the war right off. Now I've I didn't get a DE though, I've got DR, I've got DE before. And a DR. So I didn't do so well. I won both the battles, but didn't do so well. And he instead of retreating there, he retreated there, and instead of retreating there, he retreated there. So <clears throat> now I'm gonna take out this if I can. And this is not necessarily a cheat in the sense that I didn't do it last time, but this is nice. Four point seven and seven. Okay, well, they're going to. Try and defend what's left of their artillery. Now it should still fire at reasonably the same rate, really. Now, here, let's recover them both. We've got this guy, he's dug in, so we'll leave him, we'll leave everything else as it is. Could possibly get his artillery, but it's behind that river. But we can fire our artillery. We might be able to pay him back.
We sort of want to pile into all of this, but we also want to keep these outliers pinned down a bit. It's difficult really, because I feel I'm trying to optimize an assault. With limited resources. Might be able to get two attacks in here. Next turn we'll be able to come around this way and get him. Which I'll attack him next turn. Let's see whether we can continue our offensive here yeah, I think I changed it so that they can't hide, artillery can't hide under stacks but I don't recall doing that but I think I must have because obviously we're attacking the uh, or maybe it's because they were doing it with rockets Right, so we've pounded his artillery into the ground. Okay, so they might want to start moving. Got no indirect fire now. More rockets, more units. Right, I'm going to try and fight them across this river. But with my rocket support. And air support. Zero zero point eight one point one five. Well, I'm going to do it because I planned it, and we've won.
Let's make sure we win this battle. Seems too easy, not that that's a problem, because I think that the um, Ethiopians didn't really have a problem going against the Tigros, but they had to do it, so obviously it still makes it a challenge. They couldn't be complacent about it. Oh, an exchange. First exchange of the game, I think. Shouldn't be difficult. Hmm. I was thinking, I haven't thought this through, and I was right. Yeah, for losing train of conversation, so Yehi is proving a stumbling point for the Ethiopians. They're stuck in the first battle zone. And they throw more at it.
possibly. Because we can do this. A build up. I'll leave these. I could put two into there, but I sort of want to leave it as a sort of form of discipline that I should have observed before. But I might as well hang in there. This doesn't have any artillery. Though these might be vulnerable. Oh, we should win this. And let's punch through there. Oh. Took them both out. D. It's interesting. I think once they collapse, they're going to collapse, but leaving it at that, things I've got to do, but it's an interesting position. I think that the battle around there was quite telling. Yeah. It was, um, you know, those exchanges. And I, I think that's what adds to the drama of the sequence of play, really. 
you know, when something like that sort of stalls them. But they could, they could have had that similar stall because I think it was a four to one that they were on, or three to one. I mean, these those first two attacks are three to one. They could have both been exchanges, um, and it changes the pace of play. I think it compounds, you know, future play, future pace, um, because now some of these elements. We we tried, but some of these el we tried to attack them, but we couldn't go from there to there and attack. But we almost got a sort of a weak target. But they're on depressions two, depressions two. Now if they if they start to um, you know, and they get those depressions not because we attack them, but because they get exchanges. So that you know, once we can get them below five, we can actually maybe start. You know, counter-attacking them. Um, so it's not completely impossible, but it, I think it's another game of waiting for an opportunity. And it's the way the asymmetric sort of system works that allows that to sort of be a possibility, and, and forces the um, you know the Ethiopian player to be very careful about their position. I mean, if you look at what I've been doing, everything is stacked up to be over five. Um, but this guy. You know they're on depressions one each, so they might be less than five. We could possibly attack them, but not across a stream. And these stream networks are quite quite interesting because obviously there's got to be a catchment peak almost along here. You can almost see that you know there's there's got to be a peak of some sort. I think it's a bit more hilly than I've put in here, but I couldn't be really bothered to to find out the topography. To topography is quite difficult to sort of determine. I mean, the, go the visual Google Maps doesn't really help. It all looks sort of very similar. I did get a plug-in that I can sort of look at contours in my system, but the problem is I can't look at the contours and my map at the same time, and it's just a bit fiddly. Um, what I'd really like is some sort of system that allows me to put in two map points and then I did actually look at it and half develop it you know if I put in say the map point for here the map point for here everything else would then be able to calculate a map point so then I'd be able to interrogate dynamically the mapping system and I'd, you know I'd be able to say well this is um, if this is you know position whatever it is plus a thousand meters or if I, if I know the difference between there and there I can I can calculate everything else you know by logic um, by you know, dividing by 30 hexes divided by 20 hexes and whatever it is um, and then say what what's the terrain value at this particular location and then using that I don't think I'd be able to do roads but there are programs out there that have all that metadata in there but they're so complex because they cover everything Interrogating them is quite difficult, but that would be quite possible, really, especially if I sort of did some more research into it. I'm sure it's possible, but then you get the, the issue of who provides that data and information, and quite often it's um, they, they charge for it, you know, they're not giving it away for free. So if you look at any of these things like ArcGIS, it's actually quite an expensive platform. But there are the, the system I, I was looking at is free, and, and you know, I can put in two map points. And I can get the um, topography with the contour heights, but it, I can't really correlate it with my own maps. And the maps that I get from there are, are sort of not that great. For example, if I, if I get a map from a website, you know, something that you know, like on South Front or something where it's all done, you know, I have to actually put that in, and then I'll use that as the base for certain you know features and, and such. But then I would have to find the map points for it, um, and that's easier said than done because I could say maybe think of one map point and, and then find an, an, another. But I've still got to sort of match that up with with, with the map, and it's it's quite complex. Um, but you know that might be a way of approaching something um, by automatically getting the the topography types there would be a you know a scope for a little additional editing etc but it's pointless really talking about it because i haven't done it so um yeah 
So we'll leave it at that anyway, and I'll uh, speak to you later. Cheerio.